I'm going to call this video No Pain, No Gain. This is a labor, with an emphasis on the word labor. This is a labor of love. No pain, no gain. This is a labor of love. And sometimes when you're laboring, you're laboring in pain. Now, this is a response to these individuals that have the mentality. You know, when Elder Pasitar gave the edict, the order that you at least should do, back then he gave the edict that you should do at least three videos a week, something like that. Now it's come down to at least you should do a video a day, okay? Seeing that we're getting closer and closer to the end, right? Which is an example of diligence. Now you have certain Israelites that have a problem with that. And uh, again, this comes from a video that uh, was done by Elder Manat Zakba. Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahweh Shai, Kol Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baruch Hakudash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Now my throat went to itch. <coughs> Bahasham means in the name Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Baruch Hakudash. Means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, on the way of worship the Father and the Son. That were honest to the apostles and uh, the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity, who's rightly divided the order of truth directly and correctly. Peace, blessings to you brothers, you sisters that may be listening and watching in silence as well. Shalom. It's Brother Mathati from Great Millstone Camp, the branch out of Des Moines. <coughs> And as you can see on your screen, this is a video from uh, the Apostle Ball. It's like, yeah, I want to drink a little bit of water. But it's a video from the Apostle Ball. And you can see the title, A Lukewarm Mentality of Serving the Most High Power and His Son Will Not Be Accepted in GMS. And um, just want to land back off, you know, what... The spirit is, is is focusing in on, you know, um, this is in response, you know, <clears throat> to the Elder Manatus Akbar's lesson that Apostle Tahar responded to, which Apostle Gabar is responding to that, you know, and um, just like the title says, right, a lukewarm mentality of serving the most high power and his son will not be accepted in GMS, well, Yahweh Shai didn't have that mentality. And as it is written, it tells us to let this mind, right? Let's just grab that. I know it's one in um in the book of Peter. It's a good one. Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Right? So the mentality that uh, our Lord and Savior had when he was on this earth was about what? He said, no, you not. That I must be about my father's business, right? This is the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 49. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? And he's talking to his parents here. Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? You see, so it's the same mentality that we should be in, right? Our mentality should be towards what? The business of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, doing the will of him that sent us. Then did not the Most High send our Lord Yahweh Shai, and did not Yahweh Shai in turn send forth the apostles? And the apostles, what that's what apostle meant. That's what it means, right? And are not we entered into those same labors? Right. Now, I want to focus on, you know, an analogy that the Lord uses within the scriptures. And that analogy is um, how we're called his 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 sheep. <clears throat> this is. Uh, 
This is the book of uh, Psalm 79 and 13. It says, so we, thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Right. It says the same thing in Psalms 95, Psalms 103, you know, so saying the same thing. So the Lord calls us his sheep. Right. Now, when you go into. You know, the. How can I say it? The uh, the different things that you have to do in order to keep sheep, right? <clears throat> now, this is uh, the Ancient Hebrew Research Center. It says, Topics, Mannerisms, and Customs. It says, These are excerpts from Manners and Customs of Bible Lands by Fred H. White. It says, Shepherd Life, the Care of Sheep and Goats. And it actually goes into, you know, uh, things that's that's biblical you know this right here is biblical you know you can read these different things and they they show you um their source with the scriptures you know within it and and, and it's very um edifying it's very useful but uh what i want to scroll down to is food planned for the flock right because these these analogies that the lord uses it allows us to get a um, a sense of what is expected of us you see, see, our people were known as a uh, shepherds or shepherd people or what's the word? People that kept cattle. You know, that's why when we were uh, in Egypt, it says that uh, the Egyptians abhorred us because we were uh, uh, shepherds. I'm roughly paraphrasing that account. You know, so that's what we're known for as a nation. So when the Lord was using these different analogies to our people back then, they fully understood, you know, the um the role that they had to play within our nation because they were familiar with the um the occupations that the lord was using in order to uh to um to explain the analogy i hope i'm making sense i hope i'm making sense i hope i'm not losing anybody but it says food plan for the flock right just like how for instance david as a young age he was a keeper of the sheep he was a protector of the sheep. So when the Lord exalted him unto king, he already knew his duties and responsibilities because of him keeping the sheep as a youth. Same thing with Moses, how he kept uh, uh, Jethro, his father-in-law's sheep. Right? It's not a coincidence, you know, that uh, our leaders, you know, and Moses and David is the spirit. I used both of them as an example because they're one and the same. But, you know, it's um, not a coincidence that the Lord... Called those men after they had those experiences, right? But it says, food plan for the flock. One of the principal duties at all seasons, at all seasons of the year, is for the shepherd to plan food for his flock, right? And did not the Lord tell us in the book of um, Acts, the 20th chapter? This is Acts 20. And 28, it says, take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit hath made you overseers to feed the church of the Most High, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So he sent our Lord Yahweh Shah to redeem us. So through Yahweh Shah's blood, we are bought back unto the Most High. You see? So it says, take heed unto ourselves and to all the flock. Verse 29, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So our job is to look after the flock. It tells us in the book of Proverbs. This is Proverbs 27, 23. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds right so the lord has given us a position he has called us unto um a uh a, a occupation for lack of a better word you know we have a job that we must do right and we're all called to this job if you're within the camp you're calling yourself a prophet a teacher you're 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 called to do a job um where is that precept at second peter Oh, first Peter, uh, first Peter five 
in one now now peter is talking to the, the elders right but it, it trickles on down first peter 5 and 1 the elders which are among you i exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of yahweh shai and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed feed the flock of the most high which is among you taking the oversight thereof not by constraint but willingly not for filthy lucre but of a ready mind neither as being lords over the most high's heritage but being in samples to the flock that's why it says here because keep in mind paul wrote that and said what that he know after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in which is why he charged timothy to do this it's the book of uh second timothy 2 and 2 and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also to discharge the office of a teacher <laughs> you see to impart instruction right to teach so in other words to be a shepherd to be a shepherd of the flock, to properly instruct and guide the Lord's flock. This is what we're being uh, uh, groomed and raised up uh, uh, to do. Right? So that's why the scripture says instant in season and out of season. So going back, it says food plan for the flock. One of the principal duties at all seasons of the year is for the shepherd to plan food for his flock. Now keep in mind. Our Lord Yahweh, let's go back to that Peter. And Salak, I know I'm all over the place, you know, but I'm I'm, I'm just just flowing flowing in with the Spirit. Going back to this first Peter five and four it says, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So Yahweh is the chief shepherd, and there's men who have been called to be shepherds underneath him. That's why in the book of Jeremiah, the third chapter and the 23rd chapter, Jeremiah 3 and 15, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, I'm skipping the gun, jumping the gun, inside joke here. But um, the word pastor and feed is, is, is the same Hebrew word, as you can see, ra'ai, which means to pasture, tend, graze, feed. Right. It says to shepherd of ruler or a teacher. You see, as a shepherd. Right. Also written in 23rd chapter four verse, and I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. Same Hebrew words once again. And they shall and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. So our Lord Yahweh Shai. Being a chief shepherd, in turn, has set up shepherds underneath himself in order to do what? In order to feed his flock. This is the book of Ezekiel 34. And when you start up, he's going into the, the, the false prophets, right? Who were supposed to be feeding the Lord's sheep, but instead they scattered them and they used and abused the flock and, and beat them, Right? And they became meat for the uh, for the heathen roundabout. When you go into the, uh, this this chapter, but uh, let's let's go to verse twelve, verse eleven, Ezekiel. I started ten, Ezekiel thirty four and ten. It says, "Thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai: Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more." For I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them. Right. These are guys that's using and abusing, you know, uh, of the Lord's people, making merchandise of the Lord's people, as Paul spoke about. Verse 11. For thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, behold, I, even I will both search my sheep and seek them out as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep. And will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. You see, so the Lord is searching his sheep out. That's why in John 10 chapter. This is the book of John chapter 10. I started one. 
It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So you ain't going through our Lord Yahweh Shah, you count it as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door, Yahweh Shah being that door, when you continue to read down, the same is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. You see that? So we're following after our Lord Yahweh Shai. Verse 5. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. So we know the voice of our Lord through the Spirit. There's a scripture where uh, these men spoke about, did not our hearts burn? Right? Because Yahweh Shah came unto them, but he disguised himself. Uh, he disguised himself. So they didn't recognize him as they was walking by the way. Right? But in the spirit, this is Luke 24 and 32. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures? <laughs> you see? So when we heard these words from the men that we heard it from, our hearts burned within us, man. And we knew that that was our Lord that was speaking. Keep in mind, the Lord said, he that heareth you, heareth me. You see that? So the Lord has set up shepherds on this earth to guide us in the proper path. And we acknowledge that that was the voice of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that was coming out of these men. This back in John 10, verse 6. This parable spake Yahweh Shai unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. Then said Yahweh Shai unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and, and out and find pasture. <laughs> right now, pasture is what, where, where you would go lead the sheep and the sheep would go out there and graze and eat. Right. And Lord's will, we're going to get back into the, uh, that, that manners and customs. Um, verse 10, the thief cometh not, but to but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is in hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is in hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the father knoweth me, even so know I the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. You know, and this is the mentality we are supposed to have towards the Lord's sheep. We should not have a mentality of a hireling. <clears throat> See, a hireling, he would make that statement, man, that's too much, uh, Three, three videos a week, three videos a day. You know, I, I remember when the order was given to do two. And then it increased to three. And then the spirit was like, you know what? Brother should be in the spirit to do it every day. And really, that should be your mentality, man. <laughs> you know? And if it is, we can't, we ain't doing enough, man. I'll put it like that. It's written in the book of Sirach. See, for a guy to say that's too much, uh, you ain't in the right spirit right now. And this work ain't for you. Because even after all that we do, right? Yahweh told us, I believe it's in the book of Luke. <clears throat> even after all we do, we say we are unprofitable servants. We did what was our, which was our duty to do, right? But it tells us here in Sirach, the 43rd chapter, and I started the 27th verse. It says, we may speak much and yet come short. Wherefore, in some, he is all. Speaking about the Most High, right? How shall we be able to magnify him? For he is great above all his works. The Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous in his power. When ye glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as ye can, for even yet will he far exceed. And when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary, for ye can never go far enough. You see that, man? So how can how the hell can you make the statement by saying that's doing too much? For you, how about Shem Yahweh Shai? After all, what our Lord Yahweh Shah did for us, man, in the flesh. 
And you got the nerve to say that's doing too much? You see? That mentality is not of our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. That's the mentality of a hireling who careth not for the sheep. But if you have the mentality of our Lord Yahweh Shah, who careth for the sheep, what did Paul say? I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may obtain the salvation which is in our Lord Yahweh Shah. So we are here to feed the Lord's sheep. Did not the Lord ask uh, uh, Peter? It's the book of St. John 21. And 15. So when they had dined, Yahweh Shah said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these, right? Because Peter was a, 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 a fisherman. That was his occupation. That's how he uh, how he earned money. So the Lord, like, okay, do you love me? Then 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 what 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 you earn your money? We have to ask ourselves that, man. Our money maker, right? Your job, your occupation. Do you love that more than our Lord? Or, or wherever your heart is, your heart might be into your woman or your children. You love them more than the Lord? Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lambs. What are we feeding them with? Knowledge and understanding, you see? He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh shall say unto him, Feed my sheep. You see? So that's how we show forth our love, man. And it's not just in the form of videos, but it's in the form of laying down our life. As it is written in the book of 1 John, it says, as our Lord Yahweh Shah laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And that's what? That's in the full totality of this, this work of ours, whether it be videos, whether it be helping a brother in his need, you know, being able uh, uh, to provide, you know, a helping hand or monetarily wise or whatever it may be, you know? We have the mentality of serving our Lord Yahweh Shai. That's it. That's all. And you got guys that want to call us a flunky. Hey, it is what it is, man. You know, because you might think what we doing is unimportant. See, a lot of these guys think these videos. See, so you just upload all these videos and that's all, you know, because they look at it as unimportant, man. That's what it said. Menial tasks. No, no, no. We this is the, uh, 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 the 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 utmost important job that we can be doing here in these last days, man. It's being a light unto our people by showing forth the praises, honor, and glory of Yahweh. Why Yahweh Shai, man? It's a scripture where it says, uh, 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 "Say uh, say to Israel that thy God reigneth, and He shall come and save thee, man." That's exactly what we're saying in the form of these lessons. That ain't even got to be the topic, <laughs> right? The topic could be the MOTB. That's exactly what we're saying, though. Thy God reigneth and he's coming with salvation. And if you take that MOTB, you ain't going to get it. Thy God reigneth and he's coming with salvation. So you need to what? Bridle yourself. Thy God reigneth and he coming with salvation. And you need to understand that he wasn't uh, 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 born of no immaculate conception. That there's no place uh, 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 called hell that you burn forever. You see, teaching the, tr the proper doctrine directly and correctly is saying that our God reigneth and he's coming with salvation. I got to grab that, man. Because this is what we're saying. <laughs> this precept sums up the, the gospel as a whole, man. Look at this here. Isaiah 52 and 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. That publisheth peace, these are the shepherds, <laughs> these are your pastors, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy power reigneth. It's another one though, man. And I think it's in Isaiah. That was a good one though. 
And that one hit it right on the head. <laughs> showing you who the prophets are. Oh, man. I think the Lord just gave it to me in the spirit. Isaiah 35 and 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your power will come with vengeance. Even the most high with the recompense, he will come and save you. The uh, Spirit just gave me that one. But, man, I think I'm mixing precepts anyway. You know, but those two precepts to do. Because that's pretty much what we're saying, man, through all these uh, lessons that we put forth. You know? So... We just read the John and Ezekiel 34. Okay. Let's go back to the um to the, the manners and uh customs. So it says one of the principal duties at all seasons of the year is for the shepherd to plan food for his flock. In the springtime, there is an abundance of green pasture, and usually the sheep are allowed to graze near to the village where the shepherd's home is located. <laughs> right? So these pastures, what did, what, what, what did it say in the book of Psalms? We have to lead our people to those green pastures, man. See, if uh, if the Lord's flock is scattered and they out there, you know, hungry and lost. So we ought to search out the Lord's sheep. See, this is how the Lord is searching out his sheep is through his men. It says that he's uh, gathering uh, thy sons come gathered from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, Baruch, the fourth chapter. So this is how the Lord is searching out his sheep It's through his word. Now, who's preaching his word? Going back to the Isaiah 52. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach glad tidings. Paul spoke, that, spoke about that in the book of Romans. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word. So this is how the Lord is searching out his sheep. So we got to guide the sheep to the green pastures. What's the green pastures? This is the book of Psalms 23 and 1. A Psalm of David, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not lack. Didn't Jeremiah say he shall set up set up shepherds that shall not have them lacking? You see, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters, the calm waters, man. And that's the spirit. As as I'm saying, it's a it's a, a picture on my um. TV <laughs> with calm waters, man. <laughs> you know, and green pastures. That's crazy. Hey, the water y'all by some y'all was shy. You know, got all the flowers and the greenery, you know. But the the still waters and the green pastures represents this knowledge. The calmness of this is he whose mind is stayed on the Lord, he shall keep him in perfect peace. That's why in the book of Isaiah, the 28th chapter, it says precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, right? And it says, this is the rest wherein we call the, the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. You see? So we have to guide our people to these green pastures, to the still waters who represents this knowledge. Let's get um another one. <clears throat> It's the book of Song of Solomon. One. And um, as you can see in verse one, it says the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Now, when you read this, it's pretty uh, it's parabolic, you know, it's poetry, man. And what King Solomon is is going into, he's going into he's speaking about the perspective of Yahweh Shah loving the church, the church being a woman. We can read that in Ephesians. I believe it's the fifth chapter. When Paul said, I, I, I speak this in a mystery, you know, that men ought to love their wives, even as Yahweh Shah loved the church and laid down his life for it. And as you can see to read down, he said, I speak this in a mystery, but I'm talking about the church and Yahweh Shah. So the way a husband deals with his woman is how Yahweh Shah loves the church. Jeremiah 6 and 2, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman, right? And also from the standpoint of a woman being the church, Seeking after our Lord, our beloved, Yahweh Shai. See, this is the mentality we should have in searching out for him, right? Or the standpoint of a man searching out for wisdom. 
She shall meet thee as a, 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 a as a wife married of a virgin. Be always ravished with her love. Right. These are different precepts. So when we read Song of Solomon, these are different um, viewpoints that he's speaking on, man, which all puts us in a certain perspective of how we should move within his walk or the mentality we should have when it's concerning this work of ours. Right. But Songs of Solomon 1 and 7. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest. Right. And that word feedest is ra'ai. You see? Pasture, graze, feed. It says, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tent. And this is all proverbial. It's parables, man. Going into what? The care we should have for the flock and teaching his knowledge. The care that we should have, you know, for the uh, 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 for the believers, man. And of course, starting off with our Lord Yahweh Shah himself. You see, because this is how the Lord looks at us, the church, the believers, his wife, his woman, the bride, as it is written in Revelation, the 19th chapter. You see, so from there, I just want to. Type this in right here. Now this is um this H seven four sixty two is uh as you can see it says herdsman herdsman feed. It's that same word I that we had looked up in uh the Jeremiah three and Jeremiah twenty three. Just want to hit a couple precepts that has this particular Hebrew word within it because once again it puts us in a a, a perspective. You know, it puts us in a mentality, a mindset, as you can see, the, for that word shepherd in that Psalms 23 we read. So, um, <clears throat> yep, another one for shepherd. How the Lord leadeth the, uh, Joseph like a flock in the Lord of the kingdom. And that John 10 says he had a, a sheep that's not of this fold. Them he must also get too. Roughly paraphrasing that precept, if I had to continue reading that at John 10, showing you that, 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 you know, the northern kingdom had to be called back into this as well. This Proverbs 10 and 21, the lips of the righteous feed many. You see that word feed. Ra'ai. So this is how the Lord would be feeding his sheep is through the lips of the righteous, those who are preaching and the, the, that glad tidings. It says the lips of the righteous shall the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want, for lack of wisdom. This is, um, it's a lot of good precepts. But let's, let's get the ones that, 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 that tie in with, 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 with the topic at hand. Isaiah 40 and 11. It started 10. Behold, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai will come with, with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. That's our Lord Yahweh Shai. He's sitting at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. Man, that's a good one. Behold your power. Whew. I started, man, I started nine. O Zion that bringeth good tidings, who, who beautiful are the feet, right? Get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your power. Behold your God, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man. Behold, the Lord power will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. <laughs> right? Same, same words. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. Our Lord Yahweh Shai, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Showing you that there is 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 not just, you know, um, men. There's uh, women and children that's going to believe on our Lord Yahweh Shai as well. That's going to be, you know, delivered. That's going to be led carefully or gently, as the Scripture says. 
And that's through what? That's through the shepherds, through the pastors, through the teachers the Lord has established here on this earth. Who are diligently uh, looking after the flock, who are taking heed unto themselves and over the flock, man. And they ain't going to have no mentality of, man, that's doing too much. Nah, it ain't doing enough. Let's keep going. Isaiah 49. In 8, thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, who are those who are the prisoners? It speaks about uh, um, there are people robbed and spoiled, they're all shut up in prison houses. So I'm about the nation of Israel, man. Roughly paraphrasing that precept. Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The spirit of the Lord powers upon me to preach glad tidings unto the meek, to open up the prison to them that are bound. Who is it speaking about, man? The children of Israel, man. More importantly, the elect of the children of Israel. That thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourselves. He hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, right? They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places, man. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For the he that have mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. There go those, those still waters, and that water is a metaphor for this knowledge. Feeding in, 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 in the ways, in the pastures, is metaphor for this knowledge. This is the way of holiness that we're being guided down, you know? That we're being instructed in. Let's see what else they got. Yep, that's at Jeremiah 3. Yeah, yeah. Jeremiah 17, 16, as for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. You got guys that's trying to try not to do this, man. <laughs> you see what Jeremiah said? This is the mentality we have. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. You see, neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. The lips of the righteous feed many. Right. So, yeah, I think that's about it, man. So, you know, I uh, I was moved in the spirit. You know, I had watched uh, Apostle Taha's lesson first, then I watched Apostle Gabal's lesson, you know, and, um, yeah, man. Well, you know, we shouldn't have that mentality of it's doing too much. Nah, man, we ain't doing enough. But I just speak for myself personally, you know. I'm not doing enough. And I pray Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, you know, allows me to, you know, do more, man. I hope he allow me to continue to, to reach my peak, <laughs> you know. Use me as a vessel continually. And I hope so far that, you know. Uh, my works may be accepted before him, you know, as I continue to push toward that mark, man, or press toward that mark more, uh, uh, like Paul said. So I hope this was at a fine, you know, and gave a, a, a certain perspective or mentality. Matter of fact, we not even done reading this. Let's go back. So it says graze near where the shepherd's home is located after the grain is reaped. And the poor have had an opportunity to glean what is left for them, which that's in the law. Then the shepherd brings in his flock and the sheep feed on certain fresh growths or dried blades or an occasional ear of grain that the reapers may have left. Uh, an ear of grain, you know, the corn is an, another metaphor for this word. It says, or was overlooked by the gleaners. When this source of food is exhausted, then the pasture is sought in other places. The wilderness of Judea, which is located along the western side of the Jordan Valley, is carpeted 
in the spring with a certain amount of grass and this turns into standing hay as the hot weather comes and this becomes food for the sheep during part of the summer. Scriptures often refers to shepherds looking for pastors for their flock and they went to the entrance of Godor even unto the east side of the valley to seek pasture for their flocks. That's First Chronicle 4.39. The psalmist thanks the Most High for the pasturage which the Lord has, I'm sorry, which the Lord as shepherd provided for his people. So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We read that in Psalm 79. In the late autumn or winter months, there are times when the shepherd can find no pasturage that is available for his flock. And then he must become responsible for feeding the animals himself. If the flock is small, there may be times when it is stable within the peasant home and the family lives on a sort of mezzanine floor above it. At such seasons of the year, the shepherd must provide the food. This is what Isaiah meant when he said he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. We read that in Isaiah 40. In some sections of Syria, flocks are taken at this season to places in the mountain country where the shepherd busies himself with the bushy trees, cutting down branches that have green leaves or tender twigs that the sheep and goats can eat. Michael was probably speaking of this custom of providing food for the sheep when he said, feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thy inheritance, inheritance, the flock of thy heritage, Micah 7 and 14. And the rod is another metaphor for this knowledge. In the book of Micah 6, it speaks about hear ye the rod and who have appointed it. How do you hear the rod? It's the word. It says the rod and reproof give wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, it's talking about literally chastising your children if they do wrong, to, you know, to get them right. But also what? All scripture is given by inspiration of the Lord and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof and for correction. So the rod is this word, it's the scriptures. And this is what the Lord is feeding us with. And then it goes into water provided for the flock, you know, going into, you know, how the flock will be watered, man. So if the Lord has set us up as shepherds over his flock, we need to plan food for the flock and make sure that they that the water is provided for the flock, man. And that's all in the form of this knowledge. You see. It's all in the form of this knowledge, just like that song of Solomon said, it said that, uh, they feed by the shepherd's tent. Well, it says that they feed by the, uh, by the, the, where the shepherd's home is located. You know, and the home is this knowledge, is this truth. That's why in Song of Solomon, it says, uh, O thou art my brother that sucked the breast of my mother, being wisdom, I will bring thee into the house. Roughly paraphrasing, man. So we have to bring the sheep near to the house. The house is the truth. The home of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Feed them with what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which represents the pasture, which represents the grain, which represents the water. You know, so Lord will, I hope this was edifying once again. You know, just showing us, man, the mentality we supposed to be in, you know, as a shepherd people. Right? In today's time, we don't know nothing about raising sheep, goats, or cattle. You know, about what it is to be out there on the farm and taking care of them. You know? So through labor, man, we look up things like this. We read. Coincided with the precepts, man. Get an understanding. So that we can see how we're supposed to lead and properly care for the Lord's people. And in so doing, the Lord will properly lead and care for us. So, Lord will, I hope this was edifying. Tawadi Hawa, Baha Sham, Yahawa Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahawa, Baha Sham, Yahawa Shai, Barachaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. Peace, blessings, and salutations to you brothers, you few sisters that may be listening and learning in silence as well. Shalom.